44 laps led this afternoon for Michael Annette. He's hoping to lead one more. White flag is out. It's one lap to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. Now, how committed is Justin Algar to his teammate? Does he try to make the pass for the win? He's got a nice little gap there. I believe he's poised to make that move, Joey. Yeah, he definitely just backed up. He's going to see a big run here from Justin Algar. It's going to be up to up to net to make a big block here. Frozen on you fast. Half back, watch to three and four for the final time. time. Nice block by Annette. It's all on the line at Daytona. Down low, Christopher Bell all by himself. Side raft off to Ryan Sieg. Here they come through the trioval. Annette going side to side. He's blocking. Here is the checkered flag. Michael Annette, first career victory. It comes at Daytona. <laughs> How about that? Nothing like your first win. No, there isn't. And it's you talked about going to the gym and camaraderie with your team and, and having to put those perfect blocks on Adam. He did everything textbook on those last couple of laps. And he opens up 2019 with a victory. He knows he's postseason eligible. And more importantly, his first career win comes at the most historic place, Daytona International Speedway, and now the celebration to follow. Now, not a lot, ton of practice at the post-race burnouts, right? <laughs> <laughs> it takes, takes a little bit to figure out the, the burnout, right? That's, that's, that's a big piece of this, though. That's right. <laughs> you know, he grew up in Des Moines, Iowa, and his dad owned sprint cars. Always had the number one for Sammy Swindell. And the other day, Michael told me growing up, it was my dream to drive that one car, and it became a reality in the offseason. First time out, he's able to take it to victory lane. And this is the moment you always dream about, winning in Daytona uh, for your first win after so many years of trying uh, to stand on top of your car in front of this awesome crowd. That feels so good. And what about last night? Austin Hill was able to do the same thing that Michael Annette is doing now, get that first win at Daytona. Let's look at it one more time. Michael Annette able to hold him off at a great rally coming from his teammate Justin Allgaier. Career day for Michael Annette. He wins it here at Daytona. <laughs> what about the proud owner there? Yeah, Dale Jr. Oh. in victory lane with the crew. Let's hear from the winner. Michael Annette climbing out now, Regan. Michael Annette climbs out for the first time in his NASCAR Xfinity Series career. He is a winner. The Gatorade is flowing. Michael, 230 starts in this series. You picked Daytona to get your first win. How does it feel? Uh, this is uh, this is amazing. Yeah, I've uh, I counted all of them. Those my first words was kind of eight years. My eighth years and eight years in the series. This is amazing. Uh, I couldn't do it without these guys. They've uh, they've stuck with me through the hard times when everybody counts us out, wonders why uh, why I'm get to drive this car and and I think we showed it today. They just they worked their tails off on this American Heart Association Pilot Flying J1 car. We got the one in, in Victory Lane. Our, our slogan this year is one team, one dream, one goal. Uh, this was one of them, so we're starting off good. Your spotter Jason Jarrett coached you through that entire last lap. We saw you come off at turn four, start to go low, and pull the car right back up to the top of the racetrack. What was he telling you at that point? Yeah, I mean, I was just uh, I was waiting for that second line to get formed. I know they tried. It just wasn't there. Uh, when, when it hadn't formed with about three to go, I knew they weren't going to have enough steam to, to get us. So I was just worried about my teammate. If you're going to have someone back there, I knew uh, Justin was going to be the best one. Even though he, he's aggressive, I knew he was going to push hard, and but I knew he was going to go for it. So just had to had him keep him in our mirror and, and keep the gap right. But yeah, Jason did a great job on the roof. First or Not the first time, my second year in the the series we worked together and, and here we are now so uh, he did a great job and I hadn't been in that position very much so I need some coaching. Michael Annette gets his first career win on the biggest stage there is. Does this win for Michael with w the way you worked with him remind you at all of when your dad worked with Michael Waltrip getting that Daytona win? Yeah I think there's some similarities <clears throat> um, but it would it, you know I represent Kelly um, L.W. Miller and um, Rick Hendrick and a 
whole slew of other people that were behind Michael in this whole operation. And the um, Michael's not the same person that we hired. The guy that you'll see when he comes into Victory Lane, obviously he's had a hell of a transition over the last hour, but he's changed a lot in the last several months that we've worked with him. Um, I imagine that when you drive uh, and you're relegated to running in the back of the field, regardless of your efforts in and out of the car, it's got to be extremely frustrating, and you sort of get programmed uh, to approach your job a certain way. And we've had to try to convince Michael, I think, to change his approach and his mentality toward racing, encourage him to uh, believe in his potential and reignite his passion and enjoyment for driving and racing. And um, that was a very challenging thing to do with anyone. And <clears throat> when Travis became available, uh, I thought as soon as I heard the news that he was available, that we needed him to crew chief for uh, Michael because I know Travis's mentality, his personality, his fire, and his his drive is exactly what would ignite Michael's um, passion and drive and desire. And and uh, so I was so thankful that we were able to organize uh, that that union between. Travis and Michael Annette, and I told T Mac that if you know, imagine he was sort of down about his situation, having been let go from his job as a crew chief at the '95 car. And I told him, I said, think about what that would feel like to go to Victory Lane with Michael Annette, and how that might make you feel as a person and an individual and, and in your profession. So they're realizing that dream, and it's so awesome to watch. So I'm glad that I'm a part of it, and uh, this is a great, great day. Justin was saying on pit road uh, that he knows what you know what Michael's been through, having to dig back and then to get a big victory. You've watched him start to dig out of that hole, and now to come back to this point. I mean, how do you view this milestone for him today, from where he joined your organization a couple years ago? I don't know how to measure it. Um, I've never been a part of anything quite like it. Um, I don't know that I can think of an instance even in the history of NASCAR that that resembles it, but the, you know, Michael just said a second ago that he was sitting in the driver's meeting and looking at the trophy thinking that's coming home with me, that we're going to win it. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, that's that's a different Michael than the guy that came to work for us. And I think it's, you know, it's just been awesome to see that transition and him get more and more confidence. And it's been great to watch Travis join that team and sort of gain more and more confidence from the guys around him and, 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 and just really impressive for those guys to sort of transform that whole group. And uh, I mean, it'll be important to sustain that success. They believe in themselves, but it'll take a lot of uh, applying themselves throughout the year. And I, I mean, I, I don't mind sitting here saying that, you know, this will work if Michael applies himself physically and mentally, this will work if the team does the same thing. I've been with teams where I didn't feel like they believed in me and it's not a good feeling. And our year can feel like a lifetime. And so it's just, he and Michael kind of went through that and it takes so much to sort of change that mentality to get to where mm -hmm. you believe in yourself and you believe in the and you feel that the people around you believe in you as well. It, it really takes a, a lot of personal uh, experiences and, and, and it's just a very difficult process and path to go through, but I'm so happy for, for Michael and, and Travis both, they both deserve this in their life. And, um, I hope that they continue to raise the bar for themselves and challenge themselves to achieve more. <laughs>